All right, Rob. I'm handing you the navigational device. Alrighty. Don't fuck it up. You gotta get us there in one piece. They're oh, expecting dear. us. Dude, look at. I have my own. I'm like a fucking pro of this shit, dude. All right, oh, hey, I wait. thought this might be a good time to tell you guys that I've never driven on the freeway before. Oh shit. Yeah, I've, I've never driven on a freeway and I've never driven in the rain Rob. before. You know, like my entire history of driving is video games, so I think I'm set. Exactly. Rob and Richard, explain to us what we're doing here. All right, we're heading down to San Jose where we'll go to Keystone, the headquarters of the hardcore scene. Why, 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 why is this cool though? Here. In the community, community of Street Fighter, these guys are known as the tournament players. They are you know, nice. very good, They're, they practice all day long. We came from here, right? Right. Right. And then I think we're at this gas station, right? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, like, why are you filming this? 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 music in it because uh, there's like, like that yeah because you can hear all the silly noises all the more but you've been writing about the game all week have you gotten any closer to being able to sum it up you Feel play as this boy you're small his name is boy there's a girl on top of a planet. You can zoom out to the planet and look at the girl at any point. As boy stretches, then reports to girl, girl stretches. Lots of naughty themes, lots of interesting stuff. It's a toy, you could say. Um, the words that I've been using are kind of, it's a physics playground. You don't, you don't really have set goals, you don't have set anything to do. does three things. It eats, it jumps, and it squats. So like, the controls are not easy. And like like you see with the camera, you know, um, if you hold, if you want to zoom out, you got to hold L1 and then tilt back. Or Everything. if you hold L1 and R1, you can actually tilt the camera upwards. Yeah. So if you want to, you can play it or, like top or down. Or to the side or anywhere you want. Like you can do anything you want with the camera. Like it has everything you need, but to learn the camera takes a while. Like, There's actually tons of things to do. There's little things to do, but the most of the stuff you'll be doing is just of your own invention. I don't know if I would say tons. Like there's there's stuff to do. You can stretch. You can eat. You can poop. You can snap in half. You can flip around. You can try to go through donuts and such. But that's kind of it from what we've seen anyway. You'll find new stuff, especially as you get a new planet and there's right. new objects. You'll give yourself. You're like, okay, I want to weave myself, you know, around this like walking octopus cat and through this like house and through this cloud. Like, yeah, there's I mean, just it's different different things in the environments. As far as we know, they're not adding in more things that you can do apart from what you interact with. Like the first. 30 minutes I was playing, I, I thought you could only stretch, you know, 40 meters long, but then I realized you can actually stretch like 150 meters long. Right. So it it really kind of, you learn lots of stuff as you go on, you find lots of little things, and I, I imagine that's what's gonna happen over the course of the game, because the whole concept is that you keep unlocking new planets and stuff, so right. it's all kind of about discovering little things.
even though it's a it's a simple set of things, like it manages to be like engaging for long periods of time. For me. Like I can sit there for an hour and just kind of lose myself messing around with some tiny little thing. Or even when you stretch out, like trying to keep yourself on the planet yeah. and like corral objects and stuff. The length that you can stretch to is so much bigger than the actual world. You just can end up dangling off the entire yeah. level. And I think some of them, like I think the moon does get a little bigger, if I'm not mistaken, but you know, we'll see if anything actually can contain you. My favorite very thing fun. to do is to like go up in the air. You can kind of like touch the trigger buttons to make him like jump up and fly up in the air. And once yeah. he's in the air and you move the analog sticks, he actually floats up there for a pretty long time. And if, like I'd like to stretch to like the medium length and then just move around with the uh, analog sticks in different directions and he actually like twists around like a little dragon in the sky mm -hmm. yeah. and he can like fold up on himself and do like crazy, it's kind of like synchronized swimming but in the air. I like when you get like as long as possible and then you go to a new planet or just reset yourself out of the chimney and you come out in this huge long ridiculous yeah. spiral and I wish there was some sort of varied mechanic to the actual eating. I wish that if you ate two different items, they'd combine into something new when you pooped it out. Like I wish there was... there was something like that, but I'm, we haven't really been able to figure it out from right. playing the game yet. The whole thing is you have to earn meters that you've stretched. So if there was a way to kind of like amplify that number by doing certain things mm -hmm. well, I think it'd be a, a nice way to kind of incentivize people to play more. Right. I mean, there's like a top spinning in the levels, which we haven't really figured out what it does. It can land in a cloud or whatever. But mm -hmm. maybe if you could wrap yourself around the top, and that would stretch you out. Like there's certain objects in the right, world right, which right. seem like they could help you stretch more. Does eating actually let you stretch more? Because I was yeah. under the impression that so that helps. your stomach. Okay, so that's when you get all fat. Because I noticed like like a snake when you eat, you have like the you're skinny and then there's bulges in your stomach. Yeah. So I'll like eat like a giant mushroom cap and then I'll have this big ball in the middle of my stomach and then to the point of where when you wrap around yourself in a pile and you kind of tap like the movement buttons, it looks like he's convulsing. Yeah. It kind of yeah. it's kind of gross actually. <laughs> when you're too full, I guess you can't stretch as long as possible. But if you're like half full, you can stretch some. And if you don't have anything in you, you can stretch a ton. But if you stretch as far as you possibly can, then go around and eat everything. That's how you can get like the maximum, at least as far as I've found. There's potential in the in the level designs to give these goals that we're talking about, but who knows, maybe it's just always a playground. I want them to make it yeah. more vertical as well, because you can fly pretty high. The only things in the sky is, like, are the donuts, and they're always donuts, but I was kind of hoping they would have more stuff that way too, so you can yeah. do more flying around things, so you can seem to do that. So, I think people should expect the bizarreness of Katamari, but not not it being as much of a game, because it's really not. I mean, Katamari, it's like your, your goal is clear after a couple seconds of playing, and then it's just a matter of getting the hang of the controls, and like, doing what, you know, doing what you gotta do within the time limit. Here, there's none of that. It takes yeah. a while to adjust to the controls, and moving in front of the camera, which is kind of complex, it's really just a playground. Once you do all that, it's up to you to like make your own fun. I was I was just like sweaty because I was like, fuck, we're gonna fuck up their show because uh, yeah. How's it going, sir? <laughs> Where's Albert? Oh, I was just like, man, I bothered this. Hey, what's up? Yeah. You made it. Oh, guy wants a shot. Anybody? Right. Barbara had like five <laughs> shots. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Ready? Here we go. Shoot it. All right. So we have to be kind of quiet out here because the neighbors don't like it and the cops like to come. But check this shit out. When I started this place, I actually, I had no intentions for this place to turn out the way it did. I had two cabs that I bought from uh, an arcade down the street from here. They didn't want them, right? They were nice cabs. And uh, I put them together. And I was like, okay, I'm going to invite like, a couple boys over, like two or three guys, right? And like everyone was like, yo, fucking this place is legit. And like they just start, start, started inviting people like all, from all over the place. And it just, I just started like buying cabs to accommodate all the people that came over. And this is how it ended up.
there was like a pimp arcade down the street from here, Keystone. We used to play uh, games like uh, Mortal Kombat, yeah. Killer Instinct, Street Fighter, whatever, right. you know, whatever version was popular at the time. That was the bombest arcade, even though like, there's probably not too many people that remember it. Right. I mean, I think I think so far into that place that I decided to call this place Keystone too. How did everybody else find out about this? Was it just like word of mouth stuff? Word of mouth and uh, I recruited some top players from all over NorCal, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I got connections like this guy. Best player on the planet. Right here, it's you true. Know? I agree. Like everyone's like everyone says like John Choi plays at fucking Keystone too. Oh my god. They want it they want to be here and play, you know, with the best. So Keystone 2 was pretty much him and me and a few other guys and just one day when it started to get bigger, you know, he just thought of the name Keystone 2 as an homage to the original. And yeah, it's just purely word of mouth and it just kinda of spread and I've been in the scene for a while so I let some other people know. So that's how Are most of the people here tournament players? Or there's some people here that they're they're just really good at, at their local scene and they just hang out here. Mostly tourney, some casual, but all the guys are good here. So what got you in Street Fighter 2? It was magic, man. You know, you watch it, it looks like an anime movie. I didn't even know what anime was back then, but there were all these crazy buttons and combinations and people were doing special moves that you didn't know where they came from and you had to talk to some dude who looked shady and he'd be like, I'll tell you how to do a fireball. If Give me five bucks. It was just the immediate depth that you got from the game. From from having six buttons is something that's immediately different. And then having a, a character that's so you know rich and interactive, you know, for the day, that was a, a lot of animation to, to see in a character. And you could play it your way, and someone else could could play it another way. In Street Fighter Four, the last boss is called Seth. Your name is Seth. In your relationship. Uh, can I say no comment? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yes, it's he's he's named after me. You don't think he looks like me? You don't think that's a tough sounding name? <laughs> I think you need to lose the clothes, get some gray skin, maybe lose the hair. Yin yang in the yeah, stomach. Yeah, the yin yang is definitely ne that's necessary. Yeah. You stretch your arms too, like Seth? The night's young. <laughs> so Street Fighter 4, what's the biggest change from Street Fighter 3? Street Fighter 3, basically we're dropping the parries in favor of the focus attack. You can use that a little bit like a parry, but if you try and parry like Street Fighter 3, you'll get killed. So focus attack's great because it's just two buttons, you can crank it out anytime, you can tell that you're doing it. But uh, it's a new day, so it's sort of back to the Street Fighter 2 mechanics, fireballs at a distance work again. So in Street Fighter 4, exactly. fireballs are a lethal weapon. But what about the focus attack? Doesn't it absorb a fireball? You can absorb a fireball. You still take the damage, so if you get hit again before you recover the damage. Yeah, it's. but that's what's beautiful. The fact that I'm being ambiguous here is like, yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So you gotta you gotta learn the game, learn what works at what time, and it's it's beautiful. One of the marketing points of Street Fighter 4 is that Street Fighter 4 brings back the casual players. It's accessible while maintaining the hardcore aspect. Focus attack, dash cancels, long combos, damaging combos. How does Street Fighter 4 capture that accessible feeling? We really tried to go back to a lot of the Street Fighter 2 mechanics. So if you ever played Street Fighter, you can pick it up and play Street Fighter the same way you always did. But when you start learning the new mechanics, it sort of grows with you. And so unlike parries, what's so hard about parries is that you can't really see if you're doing it right, and you have to really learn every move in the game before you can start to learn to parry at the right time. And in Street Fighter 4, you just hit the buttons, you can see that you're doing the focus attack right away, and it's just up to you to figure out the right spot to use it, and how to use it creatively, and how to bait your opponent. Parries were one of the biggest criticisms of Street Fighter 3. Yeah. It, the entire engine of Street Fighter 3 kind of felt it, was, it wasn't Street Fighter 2, but in Street Fighter 4, it kind of does feel like Street Fighter 2. There's still some great combos, but there's a lot of damage scaling, so you're not going to get rocked by a big combo. And while you're getting comboed, you're also building up Ultra Meter. You're building up your Revenge Gauge. So you're basically getting more powerful while you're getting beat down, or more dangerous at least. So. Ah!
You'll see Street Fighter 4 as a, a very pretty looking game. It has new visuals, very exaggerated face, facial expressions. One of the best examples is Zangief. He's the big Russian uh, burly kind of looking dude. Maybe he's from Folsom Street Fair. So he has a move called the spinning pile driver. He grabs a guy, spins him up in the air, 360. The camera follows up, zooms out, zooms out, zooms in, and it just ends with a close up of Zangief's face doing this. I'm really amazed at the transition from 2D to 3D. So they kept the great 2D gameplay, but you know, the camera will move around again at key points, both doing the ultras, some of the other special moves. So you really get a feeling for, the characters really come to life. They're, they're 3D, they're fully realized, but it keeps the same great gameplay. For me, it's about like coming back to the fun of fighting games because fighting games for a long time. I mean, I love what the Guilty Gear series has done, but the mechanics in those games are so crazy that like normal humans can't play them anymore. I mean, it takes six, eight months to learn. You got to find top pros. Street Fighter IV is a return to the roots where anybody can pick up and play, and the time you want to put into it is what you're going to get back. But you can play it right away, and you can remember what's fun about getting together with your friends and just throwing down, talking a little trash, and getting in their face. It may have sound dismissive, but when I say like it's basically RE4 HD, that's like really cool because I love the shit of RE4. I play like every right. version I, of I the game on every console. We, we, so all love, we all love it. A really nice HD version of like basically RE4's pace and like slightly improved control scheme is enough for me. I'm yeah. okay right. for now with like the way like 5 feels. series like you get three games that are the same before you get a new one. Mm -hmm. Where this is like, you know, you're getting a little bit of new the next game. Right, it feels like a, a refinement of RE4. Let's talk about the exciting new environments like the gray and brown refinery where you're slowly waiting for someone to open a door or putting together pieces of a medallion to open a door. Sounds yeah, like Resident Evil. Sounds like Resident that. Evil. That's yeah. cool. Why is that bad? Why is that cool? Why? Well, I don't want Resident Evil to totally give up its heritage. I want to have finding medallions and I want to have and solving those goofy zodiac puzzles. I mean, yeah, that's and, part of the game. And, and I think in terms of survival horror stress, those are actually really good examples of it because in the refinery, you have these multiple points of like, you got to turn stuff and move things around. And because all these like fast, like infected, not zombies, infected guys are rushing at you, plus a chainsaw or two, a guy or two, and you got to worry about your ammo count. It actually is like the most enjoyable stressful situation I've had so in a really long playing, time. I didn't find them that fast. Maybe, I mean, I, did, I didn't play that much of it. It's a lot like RE4 where from a distance, like the, when they close into like their kind of attack range, they're kind of scrambling towards you. But once they kind of get within like maybe five to 10 feet, then they kind of start doing this, the shuffle as they slowly like raise their knives or raise their dynamite hands. And that gives you kind of like a big control yeah. manager to give you a buffer I, zone for us. AI is, is an issue though, because like you can take out most of the, the you know, the kind of drone characters with your knife. Yeah, I kind of wanted the knife thing to work better because especially from having played a lot of Left 4 Dead, I really wanted some sort of spacing move. Switching between knife and other weapons with a new control scheme feels slightly more awkward. Like when I was playing Mercenaries in RE4 as Hunk, I could easily stun a bunch of assholes and do a whole bunch of neck breaks in a row. It was like, but five, it took a while because of the new control scheme. So it just takes a little bit of adjustment, but I think once you actually get used to it, you can start being better because I actually am like a lot better at doing that kind of action now. <laughs> In RE4, you had like Leon would do the kick, and for a while he would do the suplex. And right in the beginning, I've seen Chris do uppercuts, straight punches, right hooks. It's, it's and based stuff, on your, your, and your like proximity face. to the enemy. Isn't it yeah. weird that it gives you the option to kind of do these these context sensitive melee attacks when they don't kill the enemy? Because sometimes I would do like a punch, and then I'd be like, oh, now I'm just ending up 
really close to the enemy right. instead of spaced right. out where I could have just finished him off with a few shots. It, it made the fight seem more visually interesting because one time what literally happened was I shot something that I shot something underneath. It started. It was kind of done and stammering around. I did the uppercut by aiming at right angle, flew up in the air, and when it landed, I then ran up and stomped on it a bunch of times, and it still like got up. I was like, holy shit, when is this going to fucking die? I finally stunned it again. I hit it with a straight punch and did a fist of North Star style face explosion. But instead, this is what happens when you do headshots. Then the fucking monster tentacle comes out instead. I'm like, oh shit, I just made this guy even harder than it was. And then I had to run away. I like those actions a lot, especially since I run out bullets very frequently. I'm relying on those a lot to like fight dudes with. Actually, I, li I like the controls a lot. I thought it fit very well, especially the way you were able to strafe and move. I mean, it felt really natural. And you, especially if you're getting backed into a corner by a bunch I mean, of zombies, it was yeah, very dramatic. It still is a bit like kinky that like I can't like move while aiming, but it's like, well, that's it just the way. It like Resident Evil. Yeah, that's what it is. That's necessarily a bad thing. It's just something I, it's just like when I come from playing another game, it's like, oh, that's right, it's Resident Evil. I just gotta like get yeah. used to this. It feels like a good kind of like modern update, like evolved yeah. version of what it used to yeah. be. I would say the storytelling is, is a step above. I mean, it's still a little crazy and wacky, the bad guy, Irving. He's, you know, he's traditional RE bad guy, but yeah. the cutscenes are better, a little more adult, mature, realistic. I thought the cutscenes in RE4 were great, but yeah, I think yeah. that's like kind of the big thing that this game does that no other game does, is it has all these great scenarios like consistently coming, like, oh, okay, now there's a huge explosion. Now you got these guys chasing you. Now you're, you know, this boulder is falling, whatever. And it just, that stuff keeps coming and it, it's great. <laughs> It does really show off how cool co-op can be in this game. When we were playing yesterday, just in the in the first part we played before at TGS and stuff, it's so much better when you play with real people. I mean, that's true of every game, but in this game in particular, you know, you're getting you're getting caught. You have lots of moves where you can go and help other people. Yeah. I would argue that there aren't a lot of moves to go help other people. In fact, the but the word help appears on the screen. And you press A. That's not exactly a lot of moves. There's a lot of situations where you need to go and play the game to help the other person. There's not I mean, like, there's not a specific move. It's not like you know Street yeah, Fighter or something. Co-op maneuvers. Yeah. There's not okay. Going it's, on. it's not like yeah. Army of Two. I thought in a few places this co-op seemed forced. Like there was a, a blockade that, you know, you just had to both push at the same time because it was too heavy for right. one person. It's like, that didn't need to be there. They did that to show you, hey, you guys can work together. I thought the refinery was pretty plain, and I think that I think that the thing about the refinery is if you go back th to its potential, it could be a really interesting place. I mean, refinery could have all kinds of nooks and crannies, different places to you know set up your level around, and it didn't seem to have that. It seemed to be really rigidly. You know, Everything's very linear. I I'd say even like the first town right. it seems big, but it's actually pretty linear because there's checkpoints and automatic saving now. It just kind of makes it feel like you're going through a regular action game a little more than the old RE games where you're backtracking more. I agree with that. You mean, know, we, secondary... we haven't seen the parts where there's more backtracking. The yeah. secondary thing for me about the refinery, there wasn't a real strong art style to it. There wasn't a real sense of place to it. I mean, you go back and like look at the mansion in the first Resident Evil. I mean, there was a really cool place, had a really cool atmosphere and vibe to it. And I think they could have done something really interesting, like, you know, sort of Saw-like with the refinery, but they didn't pull it off. It's just sort of a... It's it's just a weird, it's sort of uninspired. The other thing we saw was a little bit better in that sense. Like, like the it was, mountain, it was the yeah, it was on the, like on the side of a cliff. It was like kind of sunset or whatever. Look, look the lighting was really good. You know, there, there was a little bit more kind of uniqueness to it. You know what was cool about the lighting is the lighting really had temperature down, right? It's like you could really get a sense for what time of day it was from the way the color temperature of the light was, and I really liked yeah, that. Like I love games that get that right. Like, in terms of graphics, so no one else here is like a little bit disappointed by the graphics in RE5. From level to level, it's inconsistent. Like for example, the oil refinery. Textures aren't that impressive, and the water level, like the boat geometry, looks archaic and boxy. And I don't know, maybe it's just not done. I'm not saying you couldn't zoom in and find like a low res texture somewhere, yeah. but like well, I didn't notice this at all when I was playing. Really? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it looks fine, it looks good, but it doesn't look like the well, best thing out there. You know, like we were talking about the refinery, it stood out to me there, but I thought it was as much a function again of not having like a real clear art style. And I think that's because of where it takes place. It's just kind of got a different look because it's, it's Africa. I don't know, it just seems to me like they spent more time on that on that first village. It looks really good. The and then really these other good. two levels we saw, they don't look as good. But as like you village. said. How much great stuff was there late in Resident Evil 4? Yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, I hope they're saving some really great new set pieces we haven't seen. Castle. I mean, bottom line for this thing is I loved Resident Evil 4. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Resident Evil 5, seriously, it's going to be awesome. Come on. I'm saying it's got some big shoes to fill, and I'm not sure if it's going to have, you know, be better than the last game. We'll see. It'd be great if it was. <laughs>
Hey, welcome back, gentlemen. Hey. How you doing? What's going on? Hey, you don't look tired at all. Where the hell have you guys been? What has it been, like three, four days? Your hair looks wonderful, by the way. Yeah. Dude, oh, yeah. Keystone, it was awesome. It was awesome? It was really fucking awesome. Yeah. It's a it's moment amazing. of zen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wait, wait. I'm but it is, sick, it is in San Jose. That's like yeah. an hour away. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, you should totally go next time. Yeah. But why did it take you guys three days to go there and come back? It's real close. Uh, uh, you know, you know, know like, it's like, 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 Thank you. 